Hi, welcome to Learning Monkey. I am Raghu here. In this class, we will discuss about uh, attacks on RSA. In our last classes, we already discussed about RSA and the mathematical derivation for RSA. Please watch those classes and come back here. The link for the playlist is provided in the description below. Coming to today's class, we are going to uh, understand few attacks on RSA. The first one is factorization attack. Is it possible to identify factorization attack on RSA? No, it is not possible. Why it is not possible? Let's try to understand. What we have done in RSA, we have to generate two prime numbers. Let's say it as P and Q. From this P and Q, you are going to generate N value. N is equal to P multiplied by Q. Now, based on this N, we need to identify phi of N. Phi of N can be identified using P minus 1, Q minus 1. So once you find the phi of n, based on this phi of n means the set that belongs to phi of n. From that set, we are going to select E. E is the public key. E comma n. These two are sent as public key. And D is inverse of E. That is D is equal to E inverse mod phi of n. This is what we have done, mod phi of n. If you have the value of phi of n, because e is public, you can identify d. If you have the value of phi of n. Means if you want to identify the private key, you need to identify phi of n based on n. Because e and n are publicly available. You know E, you know N. If you identify phi of N, then you can easily crack D value. Because we are having Euclidean algorithm to identify inverse of a given element. Multiplicate to inverse of a given element. You know, previous classes, in the beginning classes, we had done some examples on Euclidean algorithm to identify the inverse. But identifying phi of N is very, very difficult because we are going to take we are going to pick large numbers. P and Q are of, is are of size 512 bits. 512, 512. When you multiply it, you are going to get an N value of 1024 bits. So 1024 bits means almost all near to 300 decimal digits. So identifying phi of N, you need prime factors. Finding the prime factors is very, very difficult because it is going to exponential algorithm. Exponential algorithms we are going to take years to execute if n value is large. That discussion made in uh, its design and analysis of algorithms concept playlist. So that's why identifying phi of n is very, very difficult. So factorization attack is not possible on RSA algorithm. And coming to the second one, we are having chosen ciphertext attack. Chosen ciphertext attack means if the hacker is having the access to the destination system, source system, he is going to encrypt the data. In the destination system, he is going to do the decryption. If he is having the access to that, there is a possibility to attack RSA plain text. You can easily get it back the plain text. How we, are, we can do that? Let's try to understand it. So what happens in the source mobile? He is going to generate the cipher text. Cipher text is generated by using by taking the plain text, plain text power E mod N. He is going to do that. So you are going to get C. C is sent in the network. If the hacker access to that C, what he is going to do? Choose a random number x in z n star. He is going to generate a random number x because he already know n value. E comma n value is publicly available from the set of z n star. What is this z n star? These basics covered previously. From this set, he is going to randomly generate a number x. What he is going to do is, uh, he is going to, using the x, uh, C multiplied by, C means ciphertext multiplied by x power E mod N. This value we call it as Y. 
instead of sending C, he is going to send Y to the destination. So send Y to the destination. Destination, what he is going to do? Whatever the data he got, he is going to do the decryption. What he will apply? Decryption means Y power D mod N. This is what happens in decryption. Because he got Y, he is going to do D. Y power D mod N. This we call it as Z. The output which you got in the destination, we call it as Z. It is not going to get plain text because we have modified the cipher text and we created Y. After applying decryption on Y, you are going to get Z. So now, if he had the access to the destination system, using this Z, he can easily identify the plain text. How he is going to identify? Z is equal to, what happens here? Z is equal to Y power D mod N. This is what happens in the destination mobile. So Y means C multiplied by X power E mod N. So in place of Y, substitute C multiplied by X power E. So Y power D means C multiplied by X power E power D. This can be written as C power D multiplied by X power E D mod N. And in our previous classes, when we are discussing the RSA algorithm mathematical proof, X power E D mod N, this can be written as a, see, for both of them, we are having brackets. So we did not put the brackets here. So C power D multiplied by X power ED mod N. ED means ED, can, ED means E and D are inverse of each other. Means E multiplied by D, you are going to get a modern value is a 1. So that's why ED can be written as K multiplied by phi of n plus 1. So this concept we already discussed, the second version of Euler's theorem. k means some integer constant multiplied by phi of n plus 1. So in place of x power ed, you can substitute this. So x power k multiplied by phi of n plus 1 mod n can be written as x mod n. Euler, Euler's second version of theorem which we discussed previously. So from this we can write it as C power D multiplied by X. X power ED can be written as X mod N. So C power D means P. It's a plain text. So P multiplied by X mod N, that is what equal to Z. This is what you got from Z. See, this is where you started. Z is equal to after substituting, you got this P multiplied by X. We are having in inside that. That is what we call it as Z. So from this, we can easily identify P. P is equal to Z multiplied by X inverse mod N. You can easily identify X inverse because X is generated by the hacker. He can use the Euclidean algorithm method to generate the X inverse. Euclidean algorithm can be applied in polynomial time. So this is how he, he can easily identify the plain text by using the chosen plain text attack. But in our coming classes, we are going to discuss a method called the next technique called OAEP, the new technique for applying for asymmetric key cryptography. From that, you can easily solve this chosen cipher text attack. Not only this, the next one which we are going to discuss a short message attack. This is also can, this short message attack can also be solved by using OAEP method. So there we are going to discuss, when we discuss about OAEP example, at the end we are going to discuss how it is going to solve this chosen cipher text attack by using OAEP. But you have to remember this, what we have in See, for the cipher text, he added something. During the destination, he got Z. He didn't get the plain text. If you remember this, understanding why OAAP is going to solve this uh, chosen cipher text attack, you can easily understand. Now coming to the third one, short message attack. Short message means uh, if, you are ha if your message length is very small, let's assume that hello team. If you are having this, if the hacker understand the length of the message, he can easily hack this. 
he can easily get the plain text because what's happened inside the RSA algorithm we are converting these characters into numbers means decimal digits and we are doing the permutations of those numbers means in place of digits we are replacing the another digits means we are just generating the permutations of digits if your length of the message is small you take the cipher text and you generate all the permutations of length here length is 9 all the permutations of the digits of length 9 whichever matches this cipher text you got from this that is what your message is because generating permutations of size 9 from all the digits it's very very easy that's why short messages can easily you can get the plain text so in order to avoid this short messages what we are going to do in OAEP is in OAEP we are going to do padding add pad bits and we are doing mask in order to not identify that padding bits padding bit means you go with zeros or you go with all ones like that you you do in order to not able to understand that to hacker this padding bits and the message can be masked and we do some process there we are going to understand that in our next classes when we discuss about OAEP hope you understand the attacks of RSA if you have any questions regarding the concept Please post your questions in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, please subscribe to our channel and press bell icon for the latest updates. Thank you.